How's it going everyone? I just wanted to talk about my first impressions on this unit, the Honda HSS 1332 ATD. This is like the Cadillac of snow blowers. I used it one time so far on uh, you know the wet slush we had. No clogging or anything. On the uh, 928 I clogged it and uh, this was very impressive in that situation. You could see a video on it. But I just wanted to compare kind of the the old, you know, version of the 1332 that I had before. I also had an 1132 as well and a 928 newer version of um, the uh, Honda with wheels. But I just wanted to talk about my impressions on this unit. Um, as you know, I, almost, I paid almost four grand for it. A lot of money. So... Um, here, here, I'll just zoom out a little bit. As you can see, though, the newer version, this is the 1332, it has a uh, height, an auger height of about, I would say about 22 and a quarter, 22 and a half. So it can eat a lot of snow, which is awesome. Uh, if you want it to, the highest position, which is pretty awesome, you can you can get about 27 inches. So if you had to, you can, you know, go at the end of the bank where it's plowed out and do 27 inches of snow at the end, which is pretty incredible. Um, you got a width of, like I said before, 32 inches. It's pretty awesome. The only issue I've had so far with it was the scraper blade. It was um, every like 10 or 15 feet. I was kind of bumping and bumping, and I had to adjust that. Uh, we'll see how it is next next snowstorm, but I think they lowered it too low, and I put those front skids on, so that should help me a lot. <clears throat> the shaft actually looks really thick as well compared to the older model. Um, it's like a one-inch shaft, but the one I had before was a 2013 model. So that's another difference. I'll just do a walk around. This has two bolts that hold the shaft. Instead of, there was three on the, uh, the Honda HS 1332 TAS. So there's only two bolts that hold that. So that's a difference as well. As you go around, my old Honda had the bracket right here with the skid shoe. It was kind of like this, the skid shoe but a bracket that held the skid shoe there, so there's two of them. Um, I think the front was optional as well. This one has, you can see it there, rear skid shoes right here. It's kind of hard to tell, but you got the rear. Those are just optional for me. <clears throat> the tracks are a little different. I think they're smaller. Um, even my fiance said they're, they look smaller, but you got, let me see here. They're about like 20 inches uh, in length. I think the other ones were a lot longer uh, in length compared to this one, the older one. Uh, the oil, it looked like they kept the same. You know, you got the oil and the dipstick there. I wish on, you know, newer models or if they come up with a new system that they would extend it just to make it easier for oil changes, extend this as well. Cause this makes a mess when you, even with a funnel, it's it's a mess uh, changing the oil there. So that's another thing. <clears throat> right here should be a ga fuel gauge. Uh, they changed this, I believe they removed it in 2020. So there's no more fuel gauge, which is sad. Um, so you actually have to take this off to check how much fuel there is. Reminds me of iPhone or Apple. You know how they removed the battery percentage. Now they remove the fuel gauge. I don't know a reason why they would do that. Maybe cheaper costs. Kind of sucks though in my opinion. Uh, that they removed it. I forgot to talk about this as well. So this is the you know LED light. The other one had like a round circular light. So that's a difference. The housing is different as well. This is just plastic. The other one was kind of metal. Uh, the clock, uh, uh, the shoe 
uh, design was redesigned as well. I think in 2019, um, you would have a collar this high. And uh, my 2018, you know, 928 wheeled one, it was this high and it would clog all the time. Now that it's lower, you can see it's kind of U shape. It's hard to tell in there, but it's a U shape now. And um, it didn't clog on my last video. So that was nice. It has the art double articulated chute as well. So that's cool as well. <clears throat> a new thing too. On my other one, it was electric start. So you can, you know, the, the 2014 model was the electric start. I'll just call it the TAS version. Because that was when, uh, you know, it was kind of all manual shoot. But that was electric. Um, you could plug it in from your house. Electric start. This has a battery start, so it's like a car. You just turn the key, and boom. And if that doesn't work, if the battery goes bad, you got this, the starter. So that's nice. But the other one had a starter as well. So I, I really like that key start, though. That's a great feature, in my opinion. I think that's awesome. So we'll just walk around a little bit. Electric joystick. Um, the other one had a manual stick. So it just went side to side. I guess it would be quicker. It would be quicker doing the manual. Less things to break. I heard these can go bad. Um, we'll see. I got a three-year warranty, so I'm not afraid to use it. Um, but we'll see how that is. My other ones had the, you know, the hydrostatic, so you can go up or down. Um, the only model I didn't have a hydrostatic was the Aaron's Deluxe 28-inch show where I had to you know put it in gear each time but this is nice you can kind of go on the go this is actually very very fast i don't know what honda did this year but i feel like i'm going as fast as the wheels with this it's a tank and it goes really extremely fast like reverse and forward it's a lot faster than my uh, 2013 model so i'm pretty surprised about that um let me put you guys like this. Let me see. I'll do it like this for now. You got a thumb, trigger thumb. So this brings it up, like I said, all the way. So if you're like in Buffalo, New York, you can get those high drifts if you wanted to. Or you can go very low. You can do any in between as well. See how it stops. So that's pretty cool. Just with the thumb. The only thing negative I can think of is there's just so much, you know, um, controls. So you got, this is the drive. You do that, that's the auger, engages. And then you got the thumbstick right here. So it can be kind of intimidating at first. And then you got the fast or slow. Uh, usually I put it in fast when I start it with the key. You got the hour meter too. That's another thing that's different. And the choke, take out. Uh, when you're ready to start it. So that's just a few things. This was new. The muffler heat shield. Uh, the old one didn't have this. I think in 20... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's 2017 when they changed that. So that was changed over. The 2017 model. Um, then you have... Let me take you guys off for now. So down here, this should be all the same. Yeah, you got a fuel shut off, which is awesome. I love that about Hondas. So when you're running the you know machine, at the end, you can just turn this off while it's running, and it'll start the engine. It won't do anything bad, and it'll actually uh, make it so there's no fuel in the carb. Um, at the end of the season, I usually just, there's a little slot here. At that, Let me see if I can see it right here. There's a drain knob, and you can unscrew that, and it'll get all the fuel out. Um, I usually use Startron, though, like I said. And that's a great option, I think. The handlebars seem a little beefier, too. Um, Thickness-wise, really beefy. But it, ju it just seems, the engine seems very, very smooth. Um, I thought it was going to surge because a lot of people... Are actually like rejetting them uh, with a better, you know, jet in them. But this thing, I I haven't heard any surging, anything like that yet. 
And uh, I think it depends on your altitude where you live or the, you know, the coldness. But so far, I haven't had any issues in that. Um, the shoot mechanism is pretty cool. Like I said, it's double, double articulated, so that's awesome. This is the same um, as the other one where it's the, you know, the shoe clearing clog. So you can chip away inside if it clogs. So that's pretty cool. Um, I usually tell people too, some dealers are just, you know, they have the cheaper model where it doesn't have the battery. It has the 1332 like this, but it's just the AT model. This is the ATD model. And for a few hundred dollars extra, I always say just get the, uh, you know, ATD model because you're missing. One thing you're missing is this uh, odometer, which I'm kind of indifferent about. For resale, it kind of sucks because they know how many hours you put on it. Um, it could be a lot or it could be a very little. Uh, so you get that with that. It's good for scheduling, though, if you have maintenance and stuff like oil changes or, you know, spark plug replacement. That's great to have. Then the other thing you have on this model, the ATD model, is the battery. Battery star is amazing, I think. I put a battery tender terminal on it. I have a video on that. Then down here, let's see if I can get you guys. This is a pretty amazing feature right here. There's actually cables that go into here and right here and it'll detect like if a small animal or something goes into it while you're using it like a dog or you know anything um piece of wood a skunk goes inside of it or something it'll stop it'll automatically stop the uh the snowblower from running this this engagement and it'll have a red light on the uh, hour meter. And so that's awesome. It'll make it stop. So that's a great feature as well. I believe the shear pins are similar or very same as the other one I had. Where it's shear pin this way and shear pin this way. It came with bolts and stuff. And then there's a big fat shaft back there. So you can actually take them apart and remove this whole auger system if you had to. Paint the inside and stuff. So that's nice as well and if you do upgrade to the better one like i did you get the double articulated chute so you can go higher or lower as you please um but yeah so hopefully i fixed the issue with the uh the scraper bar it kept it was annoying me it kept hitting the uh the ground a little bit and i kept feeling it bump 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 so i actually raised it with the framing square underneath and then i use those front skids as you know to push it up so the rear skids are actually just floating for now but yeah so the only thing i can think of negative a lot of people talk about this let me see if i can get you guys is if you're tall like i said before i'm only five foot six and this would be kind of back breaking if you use it like this to, um, bend down because you're let me see this like I said before the handlebars are only 27 inches down 29 inches there yeah 27 29 so if you had to use it like this that'd be tough but if it's like regular situation let me see it's perfect for me but 36 inches right there so three feet i think it's pretty good um i'm pretty impressed with you know moving it back and forth with the uh and the steering is awesome too so you got these trigger steerings when you hold them both down you can go back or forward so that's that's a great feature as well um I just think their your upgrades are pretty awesome. You got the right trigger, so you can steer to the right. Left trigger, steer to the left. Um, another thing I can think of, new versus old. Let me see if I can get you down there a little bit better. Okay. So... 
here we go. I'll just keep you here. So this is the finger, you know, like I said before, you just press this down. Very easy. It has the gas strut down there. So that's easy as hell. On the old track models, it was a pain in the ass because you had the, uh, there was like a bar that you had to push on and you can either go, there was only three levels. You could go high, medium, or low dig in mode. This, you just use your thumb and you could go any way you want. It's pretty awesome. So I really, really dig that feature. Um, tracks we'll have to see though like like i said i only had a half inch so i want to see how great this thing is and uh snow the thing i don't really i mean this is just nitpicking but i wish you could control the joystick with it off you need the key and to turn it on it has to be on to use the the joystick and just control it so that's kind of a a pain in the ass that's one thing i can't i don't really like so far um, it is heavy. I think this machine's like 300 pounds, so it is heavy. Very easy to transport, though, in my truck. Wasn't too bad. Uh, it doesn't move around at all, so you don't even need... It says you can ratchet it in the back where this plate is if you wanted to, but I didn't need it. Um, just a tank so far. I hope it's built as well as the other one time will tell um like i said i use startron and uh i think that's awesome that this goes a lot lower than the other one because you can put it like this and now i can wash you know underneath if i had to or check uh you know the scraper just to check things see how things are uh that's a good feature or if you're washing it and stuff it's just good to have where you can go that high up. This is a, a lot higher height than the other one, the older one, so that's good. Good feature. But so far, I'm liking this beast. So far, so good. And I actually traded both my machines for this, the old school Honda, you know, 1332 track model and the uh, Honda, it was a 2018 wheeled one. I just didn't want to. I only have so much space, and I, I wasn't using one of the one of them, and I just wanted to have just one snowblower, and this was it. I just wanted like the Cadillac of Cadillacs, and um, the dealer had the crack, the Aaron's crack in there, and uh, he had a few others. There was a professional Aaron's as well. I had an Aaron's before, but. I do love Honda, and uh, like I said, the ease of starting this thing is amazing. You just choke out, and then basically, as long as you have the fuel on, like I showed you before, turn the key to start. It should take like two seconds, that's it. The, the worst thing is pushing the uh, choke back in, but that only takes a few minutes, so it's not too, too bad. Um, I, just, I think... The improvements that Honda's made over the years is pretty incredible, especially like the steering on track systems. That was well needed. Um, if you had to move it with the old one, that was a pain in the ass. Um, I know there was a lever down there, disengage and engage, but good luck bringing up my hill or something. This I think I can do um, as long as I do the triggers on the bottom, both sides. Uh, it's manageable. And turning, the other one was a bear. Uh, there's no turning mechanisms or anything. This, you just hold it down and it'll turn. Um, I'm pretty impressed so far with it, the turning. But like I said, I have to, um, we need like a, you know, a foot storm, a nor'easter to actually uh, show this machine off and uh, see what it can do, its capabilities. Uh, half inch of snow is not enough at all, but... All right, guys, this is just my first impressions. Um, I'm going to have to use it for like a year or two just to see, especially in like big snow, uh, just to see how it is. And I'm very nitpicky with my equipment. And these are just the things I've seen on this. Um, things that kind of pissed me off, like I said, was the fuel gauge removal. I was pretty pissed on that. 
Um, and I forgot what else. The oil, the dipstick, they should have changed to make it easier. That's kind of a pain in the ass. It gets, you know, you could spill it easily. But that's just a nitpicky. Hand warmers. Um, if it's a, you know, almost $4,000 machine, it should come with hand warmers. Aaron's does. So a Honda should come with that. But for the improvements that it's made over the years, I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, having that double articulated chute, that's going to throw like a monster. Um, the, you know, the, the lever to go up and down with the system, I think that's awesome as well. It's so easy to do. You just hold this down and it goes up or down so easy. Um, I just think that's pretty incredible. And... Uh, what else? That stopping mechanism as well, too, in the front. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I just, I think it's going to be a fun machine. And I hope I didn't do wrong. Uh, we, we shall see, though. And uh, a lot of people swear by this thing. Especially in Canada and, you know, Montreal, where they get hammered with snow. Um, Honda's known for reliability. And as you know, I, I've sold the my old Hondas for... A profit so they're very good in resale as well uh everybody knows that hondas are uh great great machines uh very well built and uh yeah so i can't wait to use this machine hopefully we get buried with snow like buffalo new york did and uh thank you for watching hope you subscribe so you can see my videos when we do get buried with snow all right, thanks guys. Take care.